Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS presenting to you the daily quiz for 18th of February 2022. Let us begin and have a look at the first question for today. Consider the following statements with respect to Normandy format. Number 1. The diplomatic grouping was created in January 2022 with the aim of finding a peaceful resolution to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Number 2. It is an informal forum that was set up by France, Germany, Russia and Ukraine. Number 3. It takes its name from the Normandy landings in the Second World War. Which of the given statements is or are incorrect? What is the context? This article in the Hindu newspaper today talks about India's take on Russia Ukraine crisis. See, India is trying to balance its positions because it has strong relations with both the USA as well as with Russia. What is the crisis here? We've discussed about the Russia Ukraine crisis in depth in our previous lectures and you can watch the same by clicking on the link that will appear on the top right corner of your screens. Now let us discuss about the Normandy format in the backdrop of Russia Ukraine conflict. See this Normandy format is an informal forum that was created in the year 2014 by the French, German, Russian and Ukrainian diplomats. So this was formed in the year 2014 when Russia launched a separatist conflict in the Donbas region in eastern Ukraine. So when we look at the statements in our question, statement number 1 becomes incorrect because this was created in 2014. Statement number 2 becomes correct because it is an informal forum that was set up by France, Germany, Russia as well as Ukraine. So this was formed to arrive at a peaceful resolution of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Now coming to statement number 3. Yes, this grouping takes its name from the Normandy landings of the Second World War and its first meeting also took place in Normandy. So the right answer to our question would be option A one only because the question is asking us for incorrect statements. We've taken this question because there is a reference to the Normandy format in this particular article in the Hindu newspaper today. Moving on to question number 2. Which among the following is or are Earth observation satellites? Number 1, Bhaskara 1. Number 2, Insat 3D. Number 3, Saral. Number 4, Scatsat 1. Number 5, Megatropics. What is the context? Recently, ISRO launched the EOS-4, which is an Earth observation satellite. And this was launched into space using the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. And there is a reference to this in today's Indian Express newspaper and that is why we've taken this question. Now let us discuss Earth observation satellites in detail. What is an Earth observation satellite? An Earth observation satellite or an Earth remote sensing satellite is used or designed for Earth observation from the orbit. So this includes satellites that are intended for non-military uses such as environmental monitoring or meteorology or cartography and other benefits. Now let us go back to the question. Bhaskara 1 collected data on telemetry, oceanography and hydrology and this was first Indian low orbit earth observation satellite. So one is right. Insat 3D is an advanced weather satellite and is also an earth observation satellite. So this is also correct. The Saral was launched for oceanographic studies, which is also an earth observation satellite and is a joint Indo-French satellite mission. So this also becomes correct. Scatsat 1 is yet another earth observation satellite and is a continuity to the mission of Oceansat 2 scatterometer. This satellite was launched to provide wind vector data for weather forecasting, cyclone detection as well as for tracking services. So this is also an earth observation satellite. Coming to the last one which is Megatropics. Megatropics is a satellite mission that was launched to study the water cycle in the tropical atmosphere in the context of climate change. And this was also an earth observation satellite. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option D. All of these satellites mentioned here are earth observation satellites. Moving on to question number 3. Falkland Islands recently in the news is located in option A South China Sea, option B Indian Ocean, option C South Pacific Ocean, option D South Atlantic Ocean. What is the context? China has reaffirmed its support for Argentina's demand for the full exercise of sovereignty over the Falkland Islands 
also known as the Malvinas Islands. This article in the Indian Express newspaper today talks about the disputes over Falkland Islands. Therefore, it becomes important for us to know its location. Say the Falkland Islands are located off the coast of Argentina in the South Atlantic Ocean as we can see in the map here. So the right answer to our question would be option D, South Atlantic Ocean. But what is this dispute? Since the 18th century, the Falkland Islands have always been subjected to colonization and conquest by the Britain, France, Spain and Argentina. Before the 1700s, these islands were uninhabited and the first colony was established here by France in the year 1764. In the subsequent year, that is in 1765, British arrived to claim the island for themselves and this marked the start of the dispute and this dispute has been ongoing ever since that time. And now Britain bases its claims on this Falkland Islands through its open continuous occupation and administration of the islands since the year 1833. And Argentina bases its claims to these islands based on official document of 1493 which was modified by the Treaty of Tordesillas. And now these islands are being claimed by both Britain as well as Argentina and hence this dispute. Now let us take up the fourth question for the day. Which of the following are correctly matched? Here are the diseases and the vector that carries the virus. Number 1. Malaria, Anopheles mosquito, Yellow fever, Aedes aegypti mosquito, Japanese encephalitis, Culex mosquito. Why this question? There is a reference to the Japanese encephalitis virus in the PIB article today and hence we've taken this question. The Japanese encephalitis virus is the leading cause of mosquito-borne encephalitis in Southeast Asia. But there is a problem. It is often misdiagnosed as dengue. And now, National Institute of Animal Biotechnology of Hyderabad has developed a potential diagnostic biomarker for Japanese encephalitis virus. This virus belongs to the family of Flaviviridae and this is transmitted to humans through bites from infected mosquito of the Culex species and mainly by Culex tritaniorhynchus. So number 3 becomes correct. Number 2 is also correct because it is the Aedes aegypti mosquitoes that spread dengue fever, chikungunya, zika fever and also the yellow fever viruses. And the vector that carries and transmits the malaria virus is the Anopheles mosquito. So number 1 is also correct. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option D, 1, 2 and 3. Now let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2017. What is the aim of the program Unnat Bharat Abhyan? Option A. Achieving 100% literacy by promoting collaboration between voluntary organizations and government's education system and local communities. Option B. Connecting institutions of higher education with local communities to address developmental challenges through appropriate technologies. Option C. Strengthening India's scientific research institutions in order to make India a scientific and technological power. Option D. Developing human capital by allocating special funds for healthcare and education of rural and urban poor and organizing skill development programs and vocational training for them. And the right answer to this question is option B. See, the mission of this Unnat Bharat Abhyan is to enable the higher educational institutions to work with the people of rural India so that they can help them in identifying developmental challenges and come up with appropriate solutions with appropriate technologies for accelerating the sustainable growth. Therefore, the right answer would be option B. Now let us take up the fact of the day for today, which is National Assessment and Accreditation Council, which is NAC. What is the context? This article in the Indian Express newspaper today says that the National Assessment and Accreditation Council has relaxed the eligibility criteria for accreditation of higher educational institutions. What is NAC? What rules have been relaxed? And what is this accreditation? Let us understand all of this in detail. Say, National Assessment and Accreditation Council is an autonomous body under the University Grants Commission. And this body evaluates and certifies higher educational institutions that are in India. How was NAC established? NAC is an outcome of the recommendations of the National Education Policy of 1986. And this policy laid down special emphasis on upholding the quality of higher educational institutions in India. What does NAC do? NAC carries out accreditation of colleges. And what is this accreditation? 
it is a quality check in terms of the curriculum, the faculty, the infrastructure, research and development and financial well-being of a higher educational institution. And based on these parameters, NAC gives these institutions grades that are ranging from A++ to C. And if an institution is graded D, it means that it is not accredited. Now you may ask, how is this accreditation important? This accreditation helps an institution to know its strengths, its weaknesses and the opportunities through an informed review process. And at present, 392 universities and 8,483 colleges in India have been NAC accredited. But why are so few institutes accredited? Obtaining a poor grading or no accreditation at all holds back the higher educational institutions from voluntarily applying for this evaluation. But remember that this accreditation has been made mandatory by the University Grants Commission through its regulation of 2012. But NAC wants to accredit all the higher educational institutions in India in a phased manner. And now NAC has relaxed its rules of eligibility criteria for accreditation of higher educational institutions. Earlier, only those higher educational institutions that were at least six years old or from where at least two batches of students had graduated could apply for accreditation with NAC. And this accreditation was valid for five years. Now, the colleges and universities that have completed even one academic year will be eligible to apply for a newly created category known as the Provisional Accreditation of Colleges or PAC. And this relaxation in rules is expected to help realize the goal of the National Education Policy of 2020, which aims to accredit all the higher educational institutions in India in a phased manner. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.